Hey what's going on guys, Kabusu TCG here, back at again with a brand new video. And today for you guys I will be giving you my Ancient Warriors deck profile for the July 2020 format. This is the deck post Eternity Code. Sorry it's been some time um, since I've uh, posted my last deck profile on this deck. I wanted to, I, I really wanted to get this deck profile out um, as soon as Eternity Code was released. However, there were some delays, so I wasn't able to get all the cards I needed. However, I do have the deck now ready to showcase for you guys. So let's get right into the profile. So, starting off with the level 4s, we're playing 3 Virtuous, 3 Masterful, 2 Graceful, and 2 Ingenious. That's all we play. We do not play any of the other ones simply because their effects are just not as good. Um, so to quickly break it down, what Virtuous does is that if our opponent controls more monsters than we do, we can send one card from the hand of Phil to the graveyard to special summon one Ancient Warriors monster from our deck, except uh, Virtuous. And when attack is declared involving another Ancient Warriors monster, we can draw one card. And um, when we control another Ancient Warriors monster, our opponent's monsters cannot target uh, this card specifically for attacks. The So Sun Moon. So, um, what this card does is, uh, same thing as uh, Virtuous, so we c they can't target it, it for attacks. We can send one card from our hand or field to the grave, add one Ancient Warriors monster from our deck to our hand. Um, and if another Ancient Warriors monster effect is activated, except during the damage step, we can target one monster our opponent controls return to the hand. What Graceful does is that we can target one continuous spell trap that we control, send to the grave, add one Ancient Warriors spell trap from our deck to our hand. If Another Ancient Warriors monster effect is activated, except during the damage step. We can target one effect monster our opponent controls and negate it until end of turn. And then Genius, uh, when it is added to the deck, um, to, uh, added from the deck to the hand by an Ancient Warriors card, we can special summon it. When a spell trap is activated, as a quick effect, we can send one face up Ancient Warrior continuous spell trap to the grave. Uh, negate the activation when a monster's effect is activated while we control Virtuous. We can send one face up Ancient Warriors uh, to spell a trap to negate the activation of the monster effect, and we can only use each effect once per turn. Um, they all have their good applications. Generally, most Sun Moon is arguably the best one, followed by Virtuous. Sun Moon also allows us, also enables a lot of the first turn plays that the deck has, which I will explain as we go further into the deck profile and in the combo tutorial which will be uploaded next. Next we will play 3 Loyal, 2 Valiant as a level 7. The reason I play 3 Loyal, um, I used to play 2, I now play 3 simply because you know while drawing multiples are bricks, um, we can't always discard them with other, other card effects and also it's just a, it's more or less a pseudo pancreatops for the deck and 2 Valiant is really good just because it can be a free special summon and helps uh, push for game. Next, onto some of the other new cards. We play two Fearsome and one Ambitious. Um, pretty much what these cards do, they have very similar effects. So, um, what Fearsome does is at the start of the damage step, when um, our ancient warrior monster battles an opponent's face up monster, we can special summon it from our hand, and that opponent's monster loses a thousand. So, it acts as like a hand trap during the damage step in, in a way. And if a card our opponent controls is destroyed by battle card effect, we can target one card our opponent controls, destroy it. Um, and all other Ancient Warrior monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. And then what Ambitious does is while we control another Ancient Warrior's monster, your opponent cannot target this card with card effects and cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects. So it has a towers like effect. Um, then we can only use each of the following effects once per turn. If a card our opponent control is destroyed by battle card effect, we can send one card from our hand to the, or field to the grave, spell summon this card from our hand. When this card when uh, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by balance and sends it to the grave, we can special summon that card um, to our side of the field. So pretty decent um, uh, bits of support uh, with um, sort of the battle beatdown sort of strategy that the deck has. Up next, uh, we're playing 3 Ash Blossom as hand traps and 2 Kaijus, specifically just playing the level 7s um, because they have the most synergy with the deck as um, we're able to go into some rank 7 sort of plays that the, that the deck can make. Um, if you wanted to, you could instead run Nibiru's. Um, I just don't really like the idea of running Nibiru because Ancient Warriors really want to have our opponent, our, they want our opponent to have more monsters than we do. 
and Nibiru um, doesn't allow that to happen, so I'm just playing two Kamongus instead. Onto the spells, we're playing triple three visits and one borrowing arrows. We're not playing the other spell simply because it's just not like worth running. You could potentially run it as a one of. I just didn't find the space for it. What three visits does is during our main phase, if we normal special summon an ancient warrior's monster, we can target one of those monsters at one ancient warrior's monster with a different name from our deck to the hand. And if this card is sent from the spell or trap zone to the grave, you can special summon one ancient warrior's monster from your hand. You can also use each effect once per turn. And um, uh, send this card during the graveyard during your second standby phase after the activation. And we have Borrowing Arrows, which is the new card from Maternity Code, where we can target one face up monster that our opponent controls and one Ancient Warrior monster that we control. Until the end of this turn, have the opponent's monsters attack, and if you do, add that lost attack to your opponent, even if this card leaves the field. If this card is sent to the graveyard, well, you control Ancient um, Warrior monsters with two or more different attributes, you can place one Ancient Warrior's continuous spell trap from our hand or deck face up onto the field except our uh, borrowing of arrows you can use you can only use each effect once per turn so this is nice for tutoring our three visits or the ancient warriors trap that we play also another thing to note about three visits that this card actually combos up combos off with masterful to allow us to make bahamut shock uh, turn one next we're playing three tanky and three Tensu, you know, we're all Beast Warriors. Tensu allows us to play with some of the more brickier hands where we have a couple normal summons. Um, allows us to combo off. Um, it's free fodder for, um, you know, our Ancient Warriors effects. Um, so on and so forth. Then we're playing two Desires. Uh, just two. Um, you could potentially cut a Tensu for a third. Or if you want, if you had extravagances, arguably you could play that instead and change up the extra deck a bit, because Ancient Warriors, like right now, especially since the, the Link monster isn't in the TCG, don't really need their extra deck or don't go into their extra deck. We're playing well, the one of Monster Reborn. It's just a power one of card that we can display. This can be anything else that you want it to be if you so choose to. Uh, however, I like Monster Reborn for the application that it is an extender that you know we can bring back one of our monsters combo off or just uh, beat, our, beat our opponent for game then going into the traps playing triple imperm if you don't have imperms you could easily swap these out for effect veilers forbidden chalices um, just something else that would help with negations or uh, other good going setting se going second cards and lastly we're playing one defense card um, uh, so what this card does is if our ancient warrior monster battles your opponent cannot activate any spell traps until the end of the damage step So it has an armadies type effect um, You can only use one of these effects of you can only use uh, one of the following effects per turn at the start of the opponent's battle phase We can send this face up card from your spell traps into the graveyard your opponent's monsters cannot target ancient warriors monsters for attacks this turn so it acts as like a protection and when our opponent's monster declares an attack we can match this card to special summon one Ancient Warriors monster from our deck. So, pretty decent. Um, it allows us to get a, a additional like walls, so we can like wall up, or potentially um, we can have a big beater to fit in the, our opponent's board later on. Moving to the extra deck, we've got one Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Tiger King. Um, just synergizes with all the level 4 Beast Warriors that we play. When it's Exceed Summoned, we can set one Fire Formation Spell Trap directly from our deck. Once per turn, we can detach one material, negate the effects of all face-up effect monsters currently on the field except Beast Warriors until the end of your opponent's turn. So it's a skill drain style thing. And when this card is sent from the field to the grave, we can set one f f uh, send uh, three Fire Formation Spells or Traps that we control to the grave. Special Summon two level 4 or lower Beast Warriors with the same attack from your deck in face-up defense. Last effect doesn't really come up, we're more so playing it so we can tutor out our fire formation cards and so we can skill drain the field. We're playing one Emerald, just because it is a generic rank 4, left for some recycle, uh, recycling in the deck. Uh, so soul card for that regard. We're playing one Buguska, because it is plan B. It's uh, it's another option for our first turn play if we cannot um, make it totally awesome. Um, just preventing our opponent from get, um, activating any effects. On Exit One Night, just a nice board breaking card. You could combo this off with anti magic arrows against a lot of back row decks if you so choose to. 
Tornado Dragon just for more back row removal. Abyss Dweller, um, really good just stopping graveyard effects, so that's why we play it. Utopia and Lightning, um, not playing double simply because we are playing Desires. Um, the idea of running an extra deck card that is the, um, that can put that can potentially be made redundant because we banished a double isn't really worth it for me. You could obviously play double if you really wanted to, um, swapping out a Monster Reborn, especially even more so if you played Extravagance as well, where this issue would not exist. Next, we're playing Bahamut Shark, and totally awesome. Um, as you know, stated before, this is our first turn play um, that we make off a two card combo, um, which I'll show you guys in the deck profile. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and just you know, Totally Awesome is a really good Omni Negate as well. We're playing a big guy, just you know, steal our opponent's monsters. We play a decent amount of rank sevens, it's not hard to make. Um, so, yeah, solid card in that regard. Playing an IP because um, it's just a, just a, de a decent generic link to um, that we can use to disrupt our opponent. We can have Phoenix and Unicorn for that similar sort of thing where we can just uh, use them with IP. And then lastly, we have a Borosaur Dragon to help enable OTKs. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Kabusu TCG. Please like and subscribe for more content. If you have any questions, that, um, please uh, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.